Ayama, a high school student at Fujimi High, is diligently cleaning his class, much to the delight of the girls who observe his daily cleaning routine. A boy named Zazen approaches Ayama and informs him that training has already started, urging him to come along. Before heading to the field, Ayama washes his hands, impressing the girls with the amount of lather he can create. Zazen becomes frustrated and demands Ayama's immediate presence. After the warm-up, Coach Miwa informs Zazen about Ayama's germophobia and advises him to be considerate of Ayama's needs as a senior member. Zazen tosses a bottle at Ayama, suggesting he should drink from it, but Ayama skillfully dodges the throw. Coach Miwa hands Ayama a fresh bottle, reminding Zazen of Ayama's germophobic condition and reiterating that he cannot drink from or touch anyone else's belongings. During the training session, Zazen becomes frustrated when he observes Ayama avoiding any physical contact with the ball. He grows angry, assuming that Ayama doesn't take football seriously. Zazen advises Ayama not to act so spoiled and encourages him to play as a team player. However, the other players get upset, triggered by Zazen's behavior, as they see him flaunting his wealth. Being the son of a wealthy businessman, he wears branded shoes and arrives in a fancy car, while everyone else relies on public transportation. After the training, Zazen heads towards the dressing room and notices a girl tampering with the door lock. Before he can inquire, she flees. A few seconds later, Coach Miwa arrives, and Zazen expresses his frustration towards Ayama, expressing his reluctance to play with someone who seemingly doesn't take football seriously. The coach then reveals to Zazen that it's actually Ayama who cleans the balls inside the dressing room after every training session, considering it a ritual. She explains that because Ayama is germophobic, participating in a sport like football must be challenging for him. However, despite this, football holds great importance for Ayama. During a practice match with players from Ashigami High School, one of the players, Teichai, who is also selected for Japan's under-16 team like Ayama, approaches Zazen and tries to shake his hand. However, Teichai snubs Zazen and greets Ayama instead. He advises Ayama not to waste his time on the supposedly weak team and to join his school instead. In response, Ayama explains that he chose Fujimi High because it offers something unique that matters a lot to him. Everyone is curious about what it is. The game commences, and after a few minutes, Ashigami High takes the lead. For the first time, Ayama actively engages with the ball, displaying swift dribbling skills as he maneuvers past everyone and scores a goal by nutmegging the goalkeeper. Zazen is shocked, as he didn't anticipate Ayama's level of skill. Coach Miwa clarifies that Ayama was able to score because he had ample space, and the lack of physical contact didn't bother him. Such opportunities are infrequent, but when they arise, it is Ayama's specialty. By halftime, the score stands at Fujimi 2 and Ashigami 1. During the break, Teichai is impressed by Ayama's abilities and advises his team to mark Ayama closely from now on. The second half begins, and Ayama finds himself constantly surrounded by Ashigami High players, making it challenging for Fujimi High to score goals on their own. As the rain starts to fall, the game enters its last 10 minutes, and Ashigami remains in the lead with a score of 3-2. Coach Miwa questions Zazen about Ayama's condition, wondering if he is injured as he doesn't seem to move comfortably. Zazen approaches Ayama to check on him but becomes frustrated when he realizes that Ayama's reluctance to engage is merely to avoid getting dirty. Zazen becomes angry and tells Ayama to leave the field if he isn't serious about playing. Inside Ayama's locker, he discovers an even bigger cat toy. The following day, after the training session, everyone heads to the dressing room. Upon seeing Ayama's towel hanging by his locker, Tsukamoto starts sniffing it, surprising everyone. He remarks that the smell is ridiculously good, prompting others to do the same. Tsukamoto then posts about the towel on his social media. The next day, during practice, everyone takes turns using Ayama's towel, and in the dressing room, they share their amazement at its fragrance. Even the seniors and the captain use it. Zazen is shocked and wonders why this is considered normal. Goto overhears the conversation and becomes worried about what she should do. The next day, she decides to protect Ayama's towel by holding a baseball bat with nails engraved in it, trying to prevent others from taking it. However, Tsukamoto's social media post about the towel starts spreading throughout the school, and now every Ayama fan wants to sniff it, no matter what. After Ayama uses the towel, everyone tries to get their hands on it. However, Ayama manages to dodge everyone's attempts to take the towel. Zazen becomes angry and scolds everyone for running behind just a towel. Annoyed, everyone leaves the field. In the dressing room, a strong breeze causes the towel to start falling. Zazen is present and catches it. Despite trying to resist, he eventually gives in to his urge and sniffs the towel. The smell brings back nostalgic and amazing memories. However, Ayama catches Zazen in the act. Zazen tries to explain, but Ayama sternly instructs him to throw the towel away and warns that he will never forget this scene. Later, everyone asks Zazen to treat them as they have an upcoming match against Takata High. They believe it will help boost their strength. Ayama is on his way home, but due to the rain, he decides to go inside a restaurant and join them. Inside the restaurant, a girl appears to be stalking Ayama. 
Teichai from Ashigami is also present and arrogantly reminds them of their worthlessness. He flexes his muscles and greets Aoyama, inviting him to join their team. However, Aoyama declines the offer. The next day, it's the match against Takata High. Zazen is panicking because the match is about to begin, and Aoyama has not arrived yet. Meanwhile, Aoyama is washing his hands, and Kana, the girl next to him, cleans a bottle. However, Aoyama takes the bottle from her and starts cleaning it again, explaining that it's dirty. Kana becomes annoyed because she had just cleaned it. Aoyama insists on cleaning it and Kana asks for his help, leading him to the storeroom. Once inside, she locks the door and informs Aoyama that he will not be playing today. She reveals that she is the girlfriend of Takata High's captain and was warned that Aoyama is a challenging opponent, so she's taking this action. Kana blackmails Aoyama, warning him that if he tries to leave, she will shout and accuse him of forcing her. However, Aoyama starts feeling dizzy and collapses. He is uncomfortable in closed, dirty rooms. Fortunately, Goto arrives and rescues Aoyama since she has access to every key in the school. Aoyama is now able to join the game. With Fujimi High trailing by two goals, the game resumes. Aoyama quickly scores their first goal. Takata attempts to foul Aoyama, but he manages to dodge everyone and passes the ball to Zazen, leading to their second goal. However, during the game, Aoyama is taken out by one of the defenders, causing him to get dirty. As a result, he finds it difficult to play well. The coach announces that there are only five minutes left in the match, which alerts Aoyama. When the captain of Takata High attempts to score a goal, Aoyama steps in and blocks the shot with his chest. He then skillfully dribbles past everyone. The same defender who fouled him earlier tries to do it again, but this time Aoyama pushes him back. Evading the defenders, Aoyama scores the third goal. The captain is surprised and mentions that he thought Aoyama hated getting dirty. Aoyama responds by saying that the only thing he hates more than getting dirty is losing. Encouraged, he goes on to score two more goals, and the game ends with Fujimi High winning 5 minus 2 against Takata High. Despite everyone trying to celebrate with him, Aoyama dodges them. The next day, on the basketball court, a girl named Mio is impressed by Aoyama's basketball skills. Even the basketball team players are surprised. Mio, unlike Aoyama, is not very skilled at basketball and asks him how he can make every shot into the basket. In response, Aoyama simply says, by feeling it. Mio is amazed and decides to call Aoyama her master from now on. Another girl named Sayaka becomes jealous when she sees Mio getting clingy with Aoyama. Some basketball players surround Aoyama and tell him to stay away from Mio, but Aoyama ignores them and starts cleaning the floor. A basketball game between girls begins, and every boy is cheering for Mio, which angers some of the girls. Mio showcases her incredible athletic skills as she swiftly passes everyone on the court. However, she struggles to score when she attempts to shoot, giving the opponents a chance to score a few baskets. Some girls laugh at her, pointing out that being tall should make it easy for her to score. Mio becomes worried, realizing that she might lose her spot on the basketball team if she can't improve her shooting ability. She seeks advice from Aoyama, who, once again, simply tells her to feel it. Mio seems to grasp the concept as she attempts to make a dunk, but she misses. Undeterred, she tries again and succeeds this time. She couldn't be happier and thanks Aoyama, placing her hand on his shoulder, shocking everyone. Sayaka scolds Mio, warning her that Aoyama is a germaphobe, and she can't touch him randomly as he doesn't like it. Mio apologizes, but Aoyama doesn't seem affected by it. Everyone attempts to touch him, thinking that he might have overcome his germophobia, but he deftly dodges them. The conclusion drawn by everyone is that Aoyama's evasion means he is in love with Mio. Tsukamoto witnesses the encounter and quickly spreads the rumor about Aoyama and Mio throughout the school. As a result, Aoyama's fans feel depressed and lose their energy to cheer enthusiastically. Goto also feels despair as she tries to compensate for what she perceives as her own shortcomings. In the hallway, Mio greets Aoyama, but he leaves without saying anything. Aoyama then asks Sayaka if she would shake his hand, and Sayaka becomes visibly flustered but eventually shakes his hand. Shortly after, Aoyama collapses, seemingly bothered by something. In class, a boy asks Aoyama to arm wrestle him, but Aoyama firmly declines. Later, Aoyama asks Mio to arm wrestle him in the hallway, and she accepts the challenge. During the arm wrestling match in class, Mio appears dominant, but as she exerts more force, her button on the shirt explodes, causing her embarrassment. Despite this, the boys are amused and grateful to Aoyama for the spectacle. Despite the escalating situation, Aoyama is still bothered by something. During lunch break, Mio forgets her lunch, and Aoyama kindly gives her a handmade lunch. She is delighted and promises to make him a handmade lunch the next day. The situation frustrates everyone due to its rapid escalation. The next day, in the principal's room, as promised, Mio brings the lunch. However, just before Aoyama can eat it, some basketball players enter the room and snatch the lunch away. Aoyama then asks Mio to come and cheer for him at a friendly basketball game on Sunday, and she happily agrees. On the match day, after scoring a goal, Aoyama approaches Mio and asks for a high five. Every girl is shocked and accuses Mio of dating Aoyama, but she clarifies that they are not dating. 
This revelation surprises everyone, and Ayama's fans are relieved to know the truth, rekindling their cheers for him as the misunderstanding is cleared. A new student named Yumaya joins the football team despite having no prior experience with the sport. He humbly asks for everyone's help in learning the game. Soon, the judo coach rushes in and questions Yumaya about leaving the judo club when he was skilled at it. Ignoring the coach's question, Yumaya approaches Godu and offers to carry the equipment for her, showing his interest in her. It becomes evident to everyone that Yumaya has feelings for Godu. The judo coach becomes angry, feeling that Yumaya left the club for a girl. He attacks Yumaya, but to everyone's surprise, Yumaya takes down the coach, revealing his passion and strength. However, the team members feel sympathy for Yumaya because Godu is in love with Ayama. Zazen becomes angry and tells Yumaya to return to the judo club if he is not serious about football. While Godu is cleaning, Yumaya approaches her and expresses his desire to help. Godu agrees, and they clean together. When they see Ayama approaching, Godu and Yumaya quickly hide. Ayama starts cleaning the same spot they were working on. Curious, Yumaya asks Godu why she loves Ayama so much. In response, Godu admits that she doesn't remember exactly how it happened, it was something that just happened naturally. Yumaya understands the situation well because he, too, fell in love with Godu in a similar way. He approaches Ayama and informs him that Godu has already cleaned the spot he was cleaning. Ayama appreciates the gesture but continues to clean the spot, as he cannot feel comfortable unless he does it himself. Realizing the feelings between Godu and Ayama, Yumaya promises Godu that he will help ensure her feelings reach Ayama. The following day, Yumaya invites Ayama to a calf festival with him and Godu. Ayama is excited about the plan. At the zoo, they all arrive, and Godu blushes, knowing she will spend time with Ayama. Before the calf festival starts, they decide to explore the zoo. Throughout the time at the zoo, Ayama is the one most interested in watching the animals. Yumaya encourages Godu to express her feelings to Ayama, but she becomes too nervous to do so. As the calf festival begins, Mio also joins the group. She tries to greet Ayama, but her previous encounter with him makes her hesitant. Godu appears a bit sad upon seeing Mio, feeling inferior because she perceives Mio as prettier, more energetic, and for one very obvious reason. Before leaving, Yumaya suggests that everyone goes boating. He advises Mio and her friend not to disturb Ayama and Godu during the boating trip. Godu feels very insecure and inferior in the presence of Mio, as she hasn't been able to express her feelings and believes that Mio would be a much better match for Ayama. From a distance, Yumaya shouts encouragingly to Godu, urging her to speak her heart out. Emboldened by Yumaya's words, Godu opens up and shares how much she enjoyed their time together at the zoo and how she would love to do it again. Observing Yumaya's feelings for Godu, Mio's friend questions him about why he is trying to set them up. Yumaya explains that his sole purpose is to ensure that Godu's feelings reach Ayama, even if it means he might lose her in the process. He understands that not every couple is destined to end up together in a romantic relationship. The next day, Coach Miwa announces that they will be going on a training camp to improve their mental and physical abilities. Zazen volunteers to arrange the camp. At Zazen's house, Coach Miwa and Zazen's younger sister, Karin, discuss the camp's arrangements. The following day, everyone is ready to leave for the training camp, but it appears that many extra people will be joining. Godu becomes worried when she can't find Ayama, only to discover him thoroughly cleaning the bus. Everyone is impressed by how clean and spotless the bus looks. On the bus, Godu is excited to be living under the same roof as Ayama during the camp. Finally, they arrive at their destination, and everyone is stunned by the luxurious hotel they will be staying in. They are excited about spending their time in such a remarkable place. However, the arrangements are different for Ayama due to his germophobia, as Karin takes it into account. For him, there is a special setup at the traditional Japanese inn, while the rest of the team will stay at the inn like usual. This disappoints everyone. Once they have changed, they head to the beach for their training. Coach Miwa explains that training in the sand will help improve their balance and stamina. The presence of Mio and her friends makes everyone feel more energetic and excited. The football team is divided into two separate teams, and the game begins. After a few minutes of play, the captain twists his ankle, and Coach Miwa sends Goto to fill his spot. Godu is thrilled to have the opportunity to play with Ayama and reveals that she bought a football during middle school to learn the sport. Initially underestimating her because she is a girl, Kazuma tries to go easy on Godu. However, to everyone's surprise, she skillfully flicks the ball past him, displaying her talent. With her impressive skills, she easily passes Tsukamoto and Teichai while dribbling. As she approaches the goal, Zazen tries to stop her, but Godu intentionally falls, causing a stir among the players. Everyone believes it was Zazen who fouled Godu, causing them to get angry at him. However, Zazen explains that he didn't even touch her. Coach Miwa is surprised to see Godu execute such a mischievous move. As the game continues, Ayama faces Godu, and everyone is astonished to see her dribbling past him. Nevertheless, Ayama manages to make a successful tackle. Godu intentionally falls again, but this time it is not considered a foul since Ayama had touched the ball first. Ayama expresses to Godu that he doesn't appreciate such dirty plays. 
Goto feels sad and apologizes, but Aoyama praises her dribbling skills, which delights her. After the game, everyone heads into the sea. While attempting to go further, Zazen is stopped by a wall. Karin explains to everyone that their training camp is inside a dome. Using Zazen Group's proprietary construction methods, they were able to replicate actual conditions, allowing them to conduct their training effectively. After a tiring day, everyone returns to the inn for dinner. They are expecting top-quality food, but they are disappointed with what is served. However, their disappointment turns into delight when they smell the delicious aroma coming from Ayama's cooking. After eating Ayama's food, everyone is finally satisfied. Following dinner, Karin announces that they will be having a test of courage next. Pairs are formed and Zazen ends up being teamed up with Ayama in the haunted building. Zazen is freaking out, while Ayama remains his usual self. As ghost puppets start to appear, Goto takes out her bat and becomes Ayama's protector. Neo tries to catch up with Goto since they are paired up together. On the other side, a group of girls seizes the opportunity to make a plan to hug Ayama during the test of courage. However, Ayama elegantly dodges their attempts and continues with his cleaning. As the test of courage concludes, the haunted building transforms into a brand new building. Before going to bed, everyone enjoys the rest of the night. Back at the school, after their training, Zazen is curious about the woman Ayama encountered earlier. As Ayama rarely shares anything about himself, everyone becomes curious to discover the secrets he might be hiding. To satisfy their curiosity, they plan to follow him and find out where he lives. Zazen ends up with the responsibility of carrying Tichai on his back, as he lost in a game of rock-paper-scissors. Although it's challenging, he carries Tichai along. However, in the crowd, they lose sight of Ayama briefly before eventually finding him. Ayama impresses everyone by executing a remarkable jump with his bike from a great height. Before he leaves, he stops and gazes at them, as if warning them not to follow him. Nevertheless, this only intensifies their curiosity, and they continue trailing him. Upon reaching the house where Ayama enters, they decide not to ring the bell, knowing that he wouldn't let them in if they asked. Instead, they barge inside. Inside the house, Zazen recognizes the person Ayama is with, Ibuki Sego, a professional football player who signed with Spain's youth team. Zazen asks why Ibuki is in Ayama's house, to which Ibuki clarifies that this is actually his house. He reveals that after Ayama lost to him in a one-on-one -on -one match, Ayama promised to make dinner for him as a result. Zazen couldn't believe that Ayama lost to someone in a match. The next day at school, noticing Ayama leaving without training, Zazen and Goto decide to follow him. They eventually find Ayama at Minami High School, accompanied by Teikchai and the woman they saw after training. To their surprise, they discover that Ibuki is one of the players at Minami High. Ayama challenges Ibuki to a one-on-one -on -one match again. Goto is worried, but Kirata assures her that it will be fine since Ayama and Ibuki know each other well from playing together on the national team. The first round begins, and Ibuki wins it. However, Ayama calls off the second round when he notices that Ibuki is not at his best. That night, Ayama prepares dinner as per their deal. During the meal, Ibuki explains that he was off earlier due to a minor argument with Kirata. He had put mayonnaise on the food she had prepared, which upset her, and she left the house. After hearing this, Ayama suggests that Ibuki call her and go on a date to make things right. Taking Ayama's advice, the next day, Ibuki and Kirata go on a date. At the bookstore, Kirata apologizes for getting angry. She explains that she puts a lot of effort into making well-balanced, nutritious food, and seeing Ibuki ruin it with mayonnaise made her upset. As a gesture of apology, Ibuki gives Kirata a present that Ayama had given him. Kirata is initially happy, thinking that Ibuki finally understands her efforts. However, her happiness turns to anger when she realizes that the present is a book on how to cook tasty food for beginners. Kirata storms off, disappointed with the gift. After winning the one-on-one -on -one against Ayama, Ibuki feels hungry, and Kirata offers him the food she has prepared. He eats it enthusiastically, and Kirata is pleased to see him enjoying her cooking. However, Ibuki remarks that when you're hungry, everything tastes good, which triggers Kirata's frustration, and she leaves abruptly. Ayama is worried about the situation and wonders if everything will be okay between Ibuki and Kirata. The next day after training, everyone is anxious to see the scouts again. They believe Ayama might join a stronger youth club to pursue his dream of playing in the Nationals. On the following morning, Zazen visits a grave with his father, and we glimpse into the past where he promises to score a goal as a present for his late mother. Back in the present, as Zazen leaves, he looks up at the sky and reaffirms his promise to score in the upcoming match. Before the match, Zazen is looking at a photo with everyone standing behind him. They inquire about the pretty lady in the photo, and Zazen reveals that it's his mother. Coach Miwa gathers everyone for the pre-match meeting and discusses how formidable Kureishi High's defenders are. Their strong defense has helped them secure victories without conceding any goals. She emphasizes that to breach their defense, Zazen's role is crucial. While Coach Miwa is providing details to the team, Zazen appears a bit distracted. Tsukamoto observes the sad look on Zazen's face when he mentioned his mother's name. 
Kazuma explains that he saw Zazen with his father paying respects at a grave in the morning, suggesting that it might be his mother's death anniversary. With this knowledge, the team decides to give their best to cheer and support Zazen during the match. As the match commences, the ball comes towards Zazen, but he is taken down by one of the defenders while attempting to receive it. Ayama also struggles due to the opponent's anti-Ayama defense strategy. Zazen is taken down once more, resulting in Kureishi High scoring a goal on the counter. At halftime, Fujimi High finds itself trailing in the match. Zazen stands in front of a vending machine, and memories from the past resurface. He recalls the heartbreak of not being able to share his team selection with his mother, who had gone far away. As the second half begins, Zazen struggles to break through the defenders. Coach Miwa encourages him to use his aerial abilities, but fear holds him back. Hiroshi High scores another goal from a corner kick. Ayama, surrounded by defenders, tries to make a difference, but Zazen scolds him for not passing the ball. Ayama points out that Zazen's performance is affecting the team's chances of winning. Hiroshi High targets Ayama, aware of his 5-minute transformation ability. They aim to score as many goals as possible before it kicks in. However, Ayama saves a shot just before the edge of the line, albeit visibly affected by the stains on his jersey. Ayama's comment on Zazen's poor play sparks anger within him, and he hits his head on the goalpost, snapping him back to focus. Despite being at his limit, Zazen manages to make a crucial block. With only five minutes remaining, Fujimi High needs to score, but Zazen's fatigue makes it challenging for him to continue. However, Ayama recovers the ball swiftly, dribbles past defenders, and passes it to Zazen. At this critical moment, Zazen sees his mother cheering for him from the stands, and with her encouragement, he summons all his strength to score the goal. After Zazen's crucial goal, Ayama adds two more, leading Fujimi High to victory. However, after the match, everyone is angry with Zazen for making them believe that his mother had passed away. Zazen clarifies that his mother is alive and has been working in social welfare in other countries, and she was so dedicated to her work that she lost track of time. When questioned about paying respect at the grave, Zazen explains that he was honoring his ancestors, a ritual his father observes every morning before going to work. Zazen's mother, watching the match, is overjoyed by her son's goal and embraces him warmly. A helicopter arrives to take her to Brazil for her next mission. Later that evening, after Ayama's talk with the scouts, everyone is eager to know his decision. Ayama amusingly replies that he turned down the scouts because he likes Fujimi High's white uniforms. This unique sense of reasoning leaves everyone astonished. And this bring an end to our episode.